Slim film, then. This Sandra's in for quite a shock, isn't she? Up and Alec, is I know. I see. Spying the land out, is it, before it drives in? I don't get you. Yeah, giving her house a good looking over. And, I mean, if she's in poor circumstances, well... No way, now, Alec, I shouldn't think he wants to get lumbered. No, it's more genuine than that, Betty. Oh. Surprisingly. My theory is he couldn't face going hung up on. Hello, Sandra, this is your dad. Click. The end. Mm. And they rode. It's Amphath. She'll not be on social security, will she? Well, I mean, Wimslow's no great shapes. I have heard it called Debtor's Retreat. I mean, seeing as she was only 12 the last time he saw her, think of the pocket money she can claim. <laughs> well, I'd want danger money, I would, before you get me within a mile of that shop window. <laughs> She's in no danger. It's thick glass behind there. Well, I hope so. I mean, we've had everything through it, bar a double-decker buzz. <laughs> Alfie, the very lady. Pardon? Uh, we're going out tonight. There's a bit of a boozy do, so we thought we'd have a cab. So if Don's not booked up. Huh. Well, you've had that, haven't you? Flaming tax has been pinched. Never. I'm telling you, never rains but worry pours. Oh, that's rotten, isn't it? That's his living. Well, thank you for reminding me. I'd never have known. Do you know, you can't even sympathise with some folk, can you? Bang goes our lift. I'm not going on the buzz, Alf. There's other cabs, isn't there? How did it happen anyway, love? Oh, two young kids took a ride in, didn't they? He just stopped outside Gents on Belmont Road, left his keys, didn't like a fool, and there it was, gone. I just popped into a betting shop, didn't I? Came out five quid lighter and there's my cab doing a runner. Yeah. No, two lads beat, yeah. One in a green anorak, yeah. Yeah, well, I think you spread the word, you know. Yeah, I mean, I rang in last night, so there's already some looking out, yeah. Uh, oh. yeah, OK. Pete. That's Pete, you know, the controller. Yeah. He's putting the word out and he's arranged to cover me bookings. No from cops yet, then? No, not a dicky bird. Oh, what a start, eh? If 1990's gonna be like this... Well, we can always go busking. Getting very popular these days. You can't walk down that blooming precinct without some night at souls tootling away. Well, I can play Lily Marley, not Spoon. <laughs> Pound two penny, that's a booking. You watch them coming thick and fast. Hello. Oh, yeah, Pete, yeah. You've got some news? Well, go and crack on then, what? He, he hasn't. You mean, you mean he's actually seen it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, Pete, yeah, see ya. One of the letters spotted mid-cab. Regent's Road, under the flyover. Seen it being cased by the bobbies, eh? Got straight through on radio. Now, how's that for teamwork, eh? I like it, I like it. Look, love, I better just get down to the cop yeah. shop and get through that red tape. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll see you in the Rovers' dinner. We'll have a swift fruit juice to celebrate. OK, yeah. Damn. Missed it. You should have sounded your own. And what would you suggest? Do you Ken John Peel or something? There are country codes for motorists, you know. It's all right, Saracen. Easy now. Would you mind awfully cutting the engine just till I get up the lane? I really do. But the Gazette have had council adverts sewn up for years. The Gazette free sheet hasn't. The evening paper may be, but then people have to pay for that. No kidding. So? So, council thinking is that people shouldn't have to pay to read council adverts. Or to give them their posh name, local authority announcements. Yeah, point taken, but council thinking isn't necessarily a council policy. Well, not if the thinking comes from the press officer. Jerry Bateman. And not if the press officer thinks today what the chief executive thought yesterday. You certainly don't your homework. Well, it's my territory, isn't it, Town Hall? Yeah, well, it will be steady income, wouldn't it, to capitalise on your contacts? I'll ring Jerry. It's quite a pal of mine. Got me a ticket to Wimbledon once. Wimbledon? Tennis, you intellectual.
Thanks, love. Um, no offence, Deirdre, but I, I was just wondering about your paper delivery. I mean, uh, well, circumstances being what they are, I, it just occurred to me that you might not be wanting... <laughs> I mean, they do add up these heavyweight mornings. Oh, no, you've got it wrong, Mavis. It's uh, me reads The Independent. Can I the be no? Well, I asked for that, I suppose, but I just thought it might be a, an unnecessary expense. Uh, you're right, Mavis, and yes, you can cross it off. Oh, only for the time being, I hope. But, you know, when I heard, I thought, oh, Ken and Deirdre and, and little Tracy. <sighs> Not so little nowadays. No, I mean, almost a teenager, but that's a difficult age, isn't it? I mean, just when they need stability, the family's falling apart. I was saying to Emma, like, Were you? Well, that doesn't surprise me, the way you're talking. It does have a fairly familiar ring. Goodbye. Bye, Deirdre. Bye. It's so hard to say the right thing. You could just say no. Well, that's not my nature. I don't know how you can possibly show that you're not aware. And if Ken's not contributing... But... I don't see that. I mean, Deirdre's a bright girl. She's got her head screwed on right. With her council expenses and one or two other bits and bats, she'll make ends meet. Yes, it's all right saying that, but it's not easy when, for one reason or another, it's all down to one person, as you might put it. Derek not signed on, then? No, of course not. The very idea. Well, at least you've still got your fella. You're not sat looking at four walls. I thought you went out for a drink last night. I did. Jenny was in, briefly. Oh, that must have been nice. Nice. It was awful. She hardly spoke. Yes, uh, can I help you? Well, I, uh, I, I'm not sure I've got the right address. Uh, does a Mrs. Sandra Arden live here? Yes, yeah, she does. Uh, but I'm afraid she's not in at the moment. It's her parish church morning. I'm Tim Arden. Can I be of any assistance? Well, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not absolutely sure. I, I mean, I could be the victim of a rather nasty practical joke, but uh, according to what I've been told, there's a strong possibility that your wife could be my daughter. Good Lord. Uh, well, I, I, I suppose you better come in. Thank you. Would you uh, care for a drink? Well, that would be nice, yes. What'll it be then? Uh, well, uh, an Irish wouldn't come amiss. Irish? Um, I don't know. We've a malt. Well, that'll do nicely, yes. Anything, really. So, uh, oh, uh, no, no, no soda. Cheers. Cheers. Well, it seems we have quite a mystery on our hands. Is my wife your long-lost daughter, or is she not? Sandra's maiden name, you see, was Shaw. Her father was a professional footballer, Stanley Shaw. Well, in that case, there's no doubt about it, Mr. Arden. That mentions it. Stanley Shaw. He used to be known as Clogger Shaw. He ran off with Joyce when Sandra was still in gym slips. Oh, blow me. Well, quite a turn-up, eh? I didn't know that Sandra had been adopted and that she had a father other than old Stan. Old Stan. <laughs> he was the dirtiest player in fourth division. Not to mention Northern Premier League, mind you. Showed a bit of fancy flaming footwork when he waltzed off with my wife, didn't he? Well, Stan's crippled with arthritis these days, but I can imagine he must have been quite fearsome. <sighs> yeah. Daddy, I'm sorry, but Saracen's gone lame. It wasn't my fault, though. Honestly, it wasn't. This wally in a car revved up right under his nose. This is Mr. Gilroy, Vicky. Haven't we met? Uh, Golly, yes. You were the chap in the car. Uh, I'm afraid so guilty. <laughs> uh, look, if there's a bill, I... Uh, Nonsense. 
Saracen's always had weak fetlocks. Bit of embrocation and Vicky's loving care. Uh, Vicky is my daughter. Short for Victoria, which she hates to be called. <laughs> Does sound a bit regal. Oh, well, I think Victoria's a lovely name. I wanted to call her Sandra, you know, something nice and old-fashioned like that, but uh, Joyce wouldn't have it, of course. No, I, I think Victoria fits you like a glove. Pleased to meet you, Victoria. Well, <laughs> who'd have thought it, eh? That Gilroy up there on a horse like, like Princess Anne. <laughs> Tell you something, Tim, this is... It's quite a day for me, is this? Perhaps I should explain. It seems, Vicky, that uh, Mr. Gilroy, as it turns out, uh, is your grandfather. Well, to be honest, Mavis, I'm not surprised Deirdre was funny with you. I'm sure she thought you were fishing. Oh, nothing was further from my mind. I mean, I just imagined she'd want to cut down. Well, I mean, we are happy to. Well, anyway, you didn't escape the lash. I beg your pardon? Oh, she made her meaning pretty clear. She was sick and tired of getting advice from nosy parkers with axes to grind. Can nosy parkers grind axes? I'd have thought if you were grinding an axe and didn't concentrate, you could have a very nasty accident. Derek, you do talk nonsense sometimes. Yes, well, at least I don't sell it anymore. all that food. I don't want you in the drawing room making a pig of yourself in front of the telly. Hang on, hang on. We've got a visitor. Not that man from the riding school. I want your father to sell him the paddock. Sandra, at last. I had to do all the altar flowers and I couldn't just shoot off without having a word with the vicar. My dear, prepare yourself for a shock. I don't care how much they're offering you for the paddock, Tim. I don't know how you can even consider selling it. It's not the paddock. Well, whatever it is, I'm going upstairs to change. I thought seeing as though you weren't at the office, we could take a trip into town. Sandra, please, will you listen? There's somebody to see you. Thank you, Victoria. Sandra, love. Wait, well, you've grown up and no mistake. Last time I saw you, you had ribbons in your hair and a brace on your teeth. You uh, don't recognise me, I suppose. Well, uh... come on, Mum. We spotted the likeness, Dad and me. Lock the nose. Don't tease, Vicky. My God. It is. Look, Mum. Do you remember that? That was uh, was taken on that holiday in Blackpool. Yes. Yes, I remember. However, did you find me? Not that I've been hiding. Well, I uh, just rang your mother. believe how well you've done. But why? After all this time? Because I'm your dad. I mean, I'm nobody else's. That's been true all the years you've stayed away. I thought I wasn't wanted. I... After all, you're... you were always your mother's girl, really. Not entirely. Yeah, well, anyway, I... I had a living to earn and... You know, the weeks just went by and then the years and... It's not easy, this, is it? Uh, you look wonderful. You've grown up a real credit to me. As for Victoria here, I mean, well, she'd be a credit to the royal family, she would. <laughs> well, you know what they say. It's a funny little business life, isn't it? I do. Come in. Cab credit, is it? I hope so, because all this red tape is costing me money. Well, Mr. Brennan, there are certain circumstances need going into. Huh? Yeah, as you know, your cab was found abandoned. Uh, not far, in fact, from the call box. Call box. That's right, the call box whose number you gave when you reported the theft at uh, 1859. Oh, well. Well, so we uh, found your cab two streets away. Funny thing is, 
That call box is not, in fact, the nearest call box to the betting office where you reckon the uh, vehicle was stolen. Well, the room wasn't all that close, and when I got there, it had been vandalised. Luckily, I knew the area, so I ran on. Uh, but I uh, couldn't get in there, neither. Mm. So in. Wasn't your lucky day, was it? Oh. Hello. Any good news? Oh, beg it if I know, really. Look, you've got the cab. When can I pick it up? Well, it's not as simple as that, I'm afraid. Uh, your cab's been involved in an accident, Mr Brennan. Oh, no. No serious damage to the vehicle, a dent in your front offside wing. Uh, unfortunately, however, a cyclist was involved in the accident. He was knocked off his bike, and he's now very poorly and still unconscious. Oh, shocking. Them flaming lads. They ought to throw the book at them. Listen, we're there. It was a hit and run. We have a witness who identified Mr Brennan's cab, but we've not, as yet, ascertained who was driving it. Oh, well, I can tell you that. In fact, I did a misstatement. There's two of them. One in a green anorak that I'd recognise a mile off. Mm. Nothing you'd like to add to that, is there, Mr Brennan? No uh, second thoughts? Hang on. Hang on, what are you getting at? Just keep your head on, Chum. I just wondered if you got out else to say. Look, two Tedaways stole my cap. Now, you've got it stashed away somewhere, and I'm sat around the house not earning a bean. Please can I have my cap back, and that's all I've got to say. Well, I'm sorry, but there are further inquiries to be made, so we'll need to hang on to your vehicle. If you do think of anything you'd like to add to your statement, well, uh, you know where we are. I'll see myself out. What do you make of that, then? They don't believe me, do they? It's the thorn. It took too long getting to the coal box. I don't understand, Dan. Oh, you would if you'd heard the way he was going on, the questions he was asking. It's as plain as a pike stuff, isn't it? They're working on the theory that I made it all up. Made what up? Oh, at least kids still in the cab. Oh, they think it's a tale to get me off the hook as regards the hit and run. Poor blight is at death's door. Well, surely if you can prove that can you... Can I? Would... I don't know. Well, if you tell the truth. The truth? Oh, boy, can they twist that? Not if it's the truth. The truth, pack of lies, what's the difference? If you can't prove it, and the cops get an idea in their heads... Well, I left school with a few O-levels and went to work in a solicitor's office. Tim's father was a senior partner. Tim was taking his articles and... Well, we... It was love at first sight, and no mistake. <laughs> and I bet it wasn't long before that little granddaughter of mine came trotting along, eh? <laughs> yes, well, well it, it did happen quite soon, but uh, all in due course, I may say. Oh, of course, of course. Any more planned? Uh, but, well, Sa Sandra has views on that, uh, the world population and so on, you know. Well, thanks a room here. Would you like to go and see the garden? Mr. Uh, oh, uh, call, call me Alec. <laughs> in fact, come to think of it, call me Dad if you like. <laughs> yes, we can pop in and see Saracen. I should imagine that uh, Vicky will be somewhere in his general vicinity. Right. Uh, well, uh, bye for now, love. I'll, I'll see you later. Eh? Is it really, is it? Yes, sir. Uh, Help. Weatherfield recorder? Oh, yes, I'll hang on. Mr. G. Bateman for me. Can I hold? Self-important little twerk. Shh. Oh, hello, Jerry. I see. Yes. Oh, that's marvellous. Oh, yes, we do realise you'll need a substantial amount of space. That's fine, then. But we, we will need to meet to talk about things in more detail. You ring me? I look forward to that. Many thanks. Bye, Jerry. How's about that then? He's bitten. I've swung it. Just call me Wonder Woman. Well, you do agree it's quite a coup. Well, did I get a clap or a gold star or something? It's a coup. And you are wonderful and capable. And I ought to be shot because I have no faith. <laughs> Good afternoon. Workers of the world unite, eh? Oh, my mistake. You're not glued together. Um, I'd better go. No, please don't. I mean, we don't want Ken falling to pieces, do we? And stay and hold his hand, if you like. Do, do, cool it, please. I'm cool, Ken. I'm sober, I'm cool, and I'm in my right mind. So if you and Miss Piggy here will pin your ears back, I've got a few things to tell you. If you must. Well, there's the, uh, 
There's the emotional perspective to these antics of yours, Ken, and we've all had a right good wallow in that. But there's also the economics. And a bust-up marriage means a financial sort-out. I'm aware of that. No way am I going to dodge my liabilities. Oh, I'd hope you're aware of just what they are. The house was paid for, right? You remortgaged it to buy this paper. I've been advised that as half the house belongs to me, so does half the recorder. And that means half its profits and half its income. Deirdre, this is all pointless. I'll be paying your bills. Well, that's not good enough. Paying a few damn bills. I've taken advice, Ken. This is going to cost you, and it won't be coppers. I trust you got all that down in your, no doubt, impeccable shorthand. By the left. And they've got a paddock. And a stable block, would you believe? And the house, well, it's like summit out of homes and gardens. It really is. Sit down, he said. This was Tim. I looked round. I was spoiled for choice. They had enough sofas to stock a shop. Oh, how about the dustbins? The dustbins? Did they have little lace curtains round them? And when they serve you tea, did you crook your little finger eye up? <laughs> Bet you are barking right up the wrong tree. They're not toffee-nosed, you know, these people. They know how to behave. Oh, they welcome me with open arms. Hang on a minute, love. Let me recap. I've heard all about Victoria knocking Princess Anne into oh, fits. Oh, she's, she's a little belter, she really yes, is. Yes, yes. And I've heard all about Tim. No more jokes about speaking clocks, I've please. had all the rhapsodies about the house and the horse, and how you played eeny, meeny, miny, mo with all the sofas, but I've not heard much about Sandra. Oh, Sandra was great. She, she embraced me and... Uh, she didn't say a lot, but she never was a chatterbox. Does she favour you? Me? Get off, no. No, she's, she's like a film star. Jane Fonda, Meryl Streep, Boris Karloff. Well, happen you'll have a chance to see for yourself, because I haven't told you the best bit yet. Sandra's got a birthday coming up, and we have been invited to pop in for drinks. You mean I'm included? Yeah, bring the missus, Tim said. Swell the happy throng. It'll be right posh do bet. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't finish up in Cheshire life. You're kidding. Hmm? Cheshire life. Annie Walker would have a baby. Oh. I am pleased for you, Lord. I, so. I really am pleased it's worked out for you. If comedy is the food of love, then grab your knife and fork. Faith's cooking up a romantic situation next on Plus in Faith in the Future.